How do you turn friendships into gameplay? So for the past year I've enjoyed myself with a daily 4 hour train commute coupled with Persona 4 Golden and Fire Emblem Free Houses. They're both fantastic RPGs which share a super specific gameplay loop. Building friendships. TV superstar by night or war commander by month's end. Either way you spend half your time sitting at school and meeting with your buddies after class. Both games limit your time heavily and turn it into a resource. And of course, you have to juggle more responsibilities than you've got time slots to schedule with. I want to take a closer look at Persona's and Fire Emblem's heart-to-heart -heart events. How do both games build, strengthen and reward the friendships you establish? Starting with Persona. Social links, also called confidants, are unique bonds between a protagonist and his allies. You're playing the role of a Japanese high school student as you study for exams and meet with your pals. Every time you hang out with them, you earn a few points towards your relationship rank. Gather enough and you'll unlock a unique, sometimes voiced event between the two of you, involving some minor role-playing. Each event strengthens the bonds with your ally and translates into a level up of your social link rank with them. Fire Emblem's setup is quite similar. Supports are unique conversations between any two characters from your class. You're quite literally on the other side of the room as you're role-playing a teacher from the Garrick Mark Monastery. You help your students find their best path. Share a few words and gifts with your pupils and you earn enough friendship points to unlock a unique voice conversation between you and your student. Actually, any two students. While Persona focuses on one-on-one -on -one events merely between the protagonist and his band, Fire Emblem creates a feeling of company, as everyone can meet with almost anyone. Persona is a bit more in-depth. You unravel a single character's arc for 10 unique events. The better you know someone, the deeper your trust. Fire Emblem only sets up 2-4 conversations, but creates way more perspectives to present a character as a whole. After all, you act and talk differently with different people. Both systems make sense from a social standpoint. Let's take a look at a similar character from both series. Persona 4 has the toughest nails vulgar punk called Kanji Tatsumi. He skips school, beats up gangs and doesn't necessarily have the best reputation in town, obviously. Surprisingly, meeting him for the first time shows a softer side of him, one of regret and understanding. Every meeting allows Kanji to slowly open up to you. He shares his love for knitting with you and helps other people with their troubles. Kanji slowly overcomes his fears and accepts himself as the sweet soul he is and always wanted to be, therefore unlocking his true inner self. This thing's me being me. Most social links follow this exact progression. Troubled personality opens up and becomes more stable for your help and attention. Persona's friendships also always end on a good note. Free Houses has Caspar Burglies. His basic punch some sense into people trope is pretty obvious. What? You have a problem with my path now? We think you're more righteous than me? Getting closer to more thoughtful characters allows Casper to open up and share some of his troubles and feelings. Would you be happier if you were the heir to House Burglies? Of course. My brother probably wouldn't be too happy about it though. I've got nothing against him and I'd hate to cause him trouble, so I guess it wouldn't make me very happy at all. Supports create depth for an otherwise one-dimensional character. Casper might not stray away too far from his trope, but still far enough to get a better picture of his whole character. With his troubles and worries, his inner demons and his... Yeah! I'm back! If you want me to shout, then I'm gonna shout! I'm not even gonna think about it! His inner Caspar. <laughs> He's just fantastic, I love him. Support conversations create a stage for your students to be themselves. You get a chance to observe and learn from them. Unlike Persona, not every support has to end on a positive note. Some students just don't get along and might even hate each other. At best, they'll just agree to disagree. Supports and social links focus on different aspects of friendships, which leads to different pacing in the rest of the games too. Persona wants you to take your time. If you're not following a super strict day-by-day -day guide, you're probably better off accepting to miss some of the 20 or so social links. 
you'll be in a constant juggle between arranging meetings, memorizing schedules, boosting social stats, unlocking social links and, and a lot of things honestly, you get the idea. Even if you want to rush a single character you enjoy a lot, you'll need a whole month to complete their social link. Not counting the stories approaching deadlines. See, Persona is part social sim and part dungeon crawler. These halves work separate from one another. Drinking coffee and studying for exams gets replaced with turn-based battles and collecting personas every so often. Social links are a break from the combat systems or a break from the social links. You can't push most of your confidants while you follow the story, so it's either social linking or dungeon crawling. Friendships or hardships, on or off. Free Houses, on the other hand, is all about synergies. Run around the monastery and you can both meet with your students and prepare equipment for battle. And once you decide to play the actual tactical RPG Fire Emblem comes bundled with, you can do the same thing there. Enjoy yourself in turn-based battles while you push supports with your pupils. Whenever any two units heal, defend or, that's my favorite, simply stand close to each other, they will earn the desired friendship points. Naturally, the system is more passive in nature, as there are less things for you to decide. Most supports will progress at roughly the same speed. Healers and tanks might bond faster, but since support conversations are somewhat story-related, their progress will freeze until a certain story moment. Supports are more of a side effect of playing through the game. Fire Emblem's system feels more diegetic. Support conversations deal with the hardships of war. Conveniently, those bonds strengthen by playing the actual tactical war game. Synergies make perfect sense here. Persona's on a rough system feels tacked on from this perspective, but allows for way better pacing. You can't get too tired of either gameplay loop and nothing stopping you to rush any social link. You have more freedom of choice. But why would you want to rush the friendships in the first place? Well, we're still playing video games. It's not like anything goes without its own rewards nowadays, does it? Take your time might be a bit of a two-sided sword in Persona. I would absolutely recommend you to reject any perfect run guide and just play the game as it feels right. You might not answer the correct way and will have to invest extra time into confidence, but it'll at least be your own experience with your own struggles. If it wouldn't be for the amazing rewards. Social link levels come bundled with incredible in-game benefits. Switch characters mid-battle, survive lethal attacks, gain an experience boost. They are ridiculously luxurious. Social links also directly influence your persona's level and therefore strength in battle. Investing time into your pals becomes somewhat unavoidable, honestly. Personally, I immediately maxed out my Visa characters, since their recovery buffs help with finishing dungeons in a single day. In other words, more time for other social links. I also neglected any team member in Persona 4 that I didn't intend on taking to the dungeons. It was hard to decide which friendships I wanted to push for in Persona 5 since every ability felt useful in some sense. I had the feeling that harder difficulties might force you to strive for the perfect social link run. Fire Emblem's different. There aren't any big rewards for supports, at least in free houses in my opinion. All you gain are small stat increases if characters are nearby on the battlefield. Unless you're playing on maddening difficulty, this won't be too noticeable. This decision actually allows you to take your time. A lot of pressure is taken away from you since you're not able to create a perfect run scenario. At the start of the game, you choose one of the three houses to teach, hence the game's name. With this choice, you lock in a third of the game's story and cast as your available supports. You might add a few students from other classes later, but you're probably better off replaying the game and enjoying a new side of the story with entirely new conversations instead. Your pal's banter is a reward in itself due to the more passive nature of the system. Supports allow you to cool down after long stretches of combat. You're less focused on maximizing your limited time and instead appreciate supports for what they are. Friendships are the reward. Alright, let's summarize real quick. Persona games focus on the individual. Friendship systems work as a separate system from the round-based dungeon crawler gameplay. Investing your limited time into friendships comes bundled with fantastic benefits within the game's dungeons. Persona social links lead to a maximization-based mindset where you try to make the best decision with your limited time. 
Fire Emblem Three Houses focuses on a group. Friendship systems synergize with the tactical RPG gameplay. Friendships aren't heavily rewarded, but incentivize multiple playthroughs of the game instead. Free Houses supports lead to a satisfaction-based mindset, where you simply try to enjoy what you're given. I got that last line from a Daryl Talks Games video. Please check it out in the top right corner. Personally, I love both of these games a lot. They switched my otherwise tiring commute into an entertaining one instead. I feel like Persona's friendships feel more real and stronger than Fire Emblem's, but Free Houses got a lot of more hours out of me since I couldn't stop after my first playthrough. Both make me forget how many hours I pour into them on a regular basis. In case you long for more content, I'd love to recommend you some other fellow YouTubers. Weeby made a fantastic analysis video for Persona 5 and also has a great let's play of the original game. Watching it rekindled my urge to write an analysis myself. As for Free Houses, I'd recommend you Sam's discussion on one of the four paths you can take in the story on the Digital Dream Club's channel. Check them out and enjoy their content. Other than that, thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.